Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be looking at creating a sort of door level transition sort of system with keys where um, you need to have a specific key to be able to pass through a door. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing in the content browser, right click, add a blueprint that, um, of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore key. Okay, we'll open this up really quick. Um, I'm going to add a uh, scene component that I'll call root and we'll just drag that and drop it to replace the default scene root uh, then we'll add a static mesh and this will be called key okay so for for the static mesh I'm gonna choose the material sphere here um, and of course it's gonna okay one sec guys alright sorry for that uh, so anyways in the details panel for static mesh we are going to choose um, just the material sphere for now. This is purely a placeholder. Uh, you know, you'd probably want your own mesh, but this will work for now. Next, we'll add a sphere collision, and this will be called just overlap. Um, and basically, when we overlap this, we'll do something. Uh, so I'm going to change its radius there to 150, and it should be good to go for now. Uh, and then I'm going to untick hidden in game just so that you guys can see it. Uh, but you know, for your own game, make sure that that's set to true. Okay. Now we're going to go into our, um, or next we're going to create another blueprint call of type actor that we'll call BP underscore uh, level transition. And we'll open this up. And again, we'll add a scene component that we'll call root just to get rid of that default. Then we'll add a static mesh. And this will be our kind of door that acts as, you know, just the, the visual representation of, you know, what we kind of go through. Um, so I'm going to choose the door, and I am using the starter content, so we have this door here. Um, so I'm going to move it over a little bit, just to center it. And then lastly, we'll add a box collision, and this will again just be called like overlap. All right, and then we can reposition this. Um, I'll change up the box extent, set the Z to 100. Uh, the X, we can just leave the X, but the Y, maybe we want to say uh, 45, maybe. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then we'll just position it so that it's all the way facing one direction. Okay, so we've done that. Um, now what we need to do is uh, we're going to right click and we need to create, um, go to blueprints and create an enumeration. And this will be called E key type. And basically, this will be, you know, represent each of the different types of keys that we'll have. So I'm just adding four really quick. The first one will be called none, and this will be kind of a default. Next, we'll add uh, maybe blue. Uh, you could do red. And how about green? Okay, so we have these three key types, and, you know, you can add more depending on, you know, what whatever your game calls for. Um, so next, we are going to create a material now um, that will kind of change depending on the key type. So we'll right click, create a material called M underscore uh, key. We'll open it up and all we're going to do is hold four and click to add a vector four. I'll plug this into base color and I'm going to right click and say convert to parameter. Now we'll click here to rename it and we're going to call it base color. And now we'll be able to create instances of this um, material uh, and you know we'll be able to edit the base color value. Okay, so we'll do that really quick. Um, we'll go back out to the content browser, right click, and create a material instance called M underscore blue key. Uh, oops, I opened up the wrong thing. We'll right click again and create another one called M underscore uh, red key. And then finally one last one called M underscore green key. Okay, so we'll save everything really quick. Now we'll open up the blue key, and to change the color, you need to tick the base color. I realize I spelled that wrong, but you know, go ahead and change it. Um, and then we'll just open the color picker, and we'll change it to blue. Go ahead and save it now. Uh, then we'll open up the green key, do the same thing, change it to green. All right. Then we'll open up the red key, again, change it to red and we should be good to go with the colors. Now, uh, the next thing we need to do is go to the BP key, okay? And um, 
what we'll do is go to the construction script and we're going to take our key here and we're going to drag off and say set material at index 0 okay and you can see that by clicking on the key and see you know element index 0 is this world grid material uh, so that'll be the value or the material rather that we change so we're going to drag off of material and um, we're going to use a select node which kind of acts like a switch uh, so it'll choose a different option depending on the uh, the value going into it now for the value going into it we're going to add a variable called key type and this will be our e key type uh, enumeration that we made so we'll change this to editable so that we can edit the type of uh, you know key it is so now we'll drag in say get and we'll just plug it straight into the index and that will convert it to us and you see it automatically populates so for none we're gonna just choose the key just the M key uh, for blue we'll choose blue key for red we'll choose red key and for green we'll choose green key All right. so next what we're gonna do is go to our uh, we're gonna go find our character and we're gonna open up his blueprint and I've got some stuff in here already um, just ignore that um, and what we're gonna add is a variable that we'll call uh, owned keys so these will be you know all the keys that the player owns and we'll change this to e key type okay and we want to make this an array okay so we'll compile and save that alright so that's good to go uh, we don't need to do anything else yet uh, so we'll go back to our bp underscore key and we'll go to the event graph and get rid of all this stuff really quick and all we're gonna do is click on the overlap volume right click add an event called on begin overlap okay from other actor we want to cast to our character so in this case it's third person character okay from our third person character we want to get that owned keys array and uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say add not add unique just add and plug this in and the enum that we'll add is our key type so we'll get it plug it in like so right and then after we've added it we'll simply say destroy actor okay so we'll compile and save All right next we'll go to our BP level transition and go to the event graph okay we'll get rid of this stuff um, and now we need to add two variables the first variable will will be again key or it'll be called required key type okay and change this to um, our e key type and this will be the key type that we need to be able to pass to the door all right next we'll add another one called uh, level name and we'll change this to a name uh, variable and again make that editable and basically that'll just be the the name of the level we want to transition to okay so next click the overlap box collision right click add an event on component begin overlap and again we're going to uh, as the other actor cast to our character so again the third person character next we want to get the owned keys and for each element in our uh, owned keys array we want to check if it's equal to our required key and if it is then we'll open up a level okay so to do that we're gonna say for each loop okay and we'll hook this up like so and now inside the loop body we're going to drag off and do a branch right and we're gonna check if the array element is uh, equal to uh, equal enum and if it's equal to our required key type okay so we'll go ahead and hook the the boolean up and now if it is what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to take this owned keys oops and say remove index All right. and the index we're gonna remove is whatever index that um, that you know triggered this uh, or set this to true so it'll remove that specific key um, so you know say we have like three red keys it'll only remove one red key okay so we'll compile and save that now after we've removed it uh, we are going to uh, do something else so basically um, right now since we're going to be using these doors to transition between levels 
um, and we're going to be doing so by opening levels and not level streaming. Uh, this means that when we open a new level, all of our characters' default, you know, variables, uh, or all of our variables rather, will be set to their default values. So any keys that we currently have won't carry over to the next level. So uh, to fix that, we're going to use something called a game instance. So we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and Map and Modes. And under down here where it says Game Instance Class, we're going to click the plus to add a new one. And I'm going to add it to the content browser. And we'll call this uh, Test Game Instance. OK. And it'll open it up for us. And now all we're going to do is add a variable called um, just player keys keys okay and we'll change this to e key type and we'll make this an array all right so now um, what we'll do is we'll go back to the third person character quickly and we'll add an event begin play all right and from uh, the execute we want to cast to our test game instance for the object, we're going to say uh, get game instance. Okay, and from here we want to drag out and say um, get player keys, and then we're going to set our owned keys. So basically, whenever the level loads, um, it'll call to the game instance and get any of the keys that we currently have stored. Now, uh, the next thing or the last thing we need to do is just make sure that we you know, store those in the game instance. So we'll go back to the BP level transition and off of the remove index, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to cast to the test game instance. We're going to get, you know, game instance. And then we want to drag off here and say set player keys. And what we're going to set it as is all the way back here, this owned keys value. So right there, drag that array and plug it in. All right now after we've done that then we're simply going to say open level and for the level name we'll take that level name variable plug it in and we should be good to go. So uh, let's go ahead and start testing this out. So uh, if we go into our maps folder here I've created a basic level just called test one okay um, so that'll be the level that we'll transition to. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take our level transition door you know, just drag it out really quick, rotate it a little bit. Um, and basically, over here in the default, uh, we can find, you know, the variables that we exposed or made editable. So the required key type, we'll make it say red. And then for level name, we're going to type in that that new level. Okay. Um, so make sure the level name is very specific. It has to be, you know, exact, you know, case or, yeah, correct casing uh, otherwise it'll cause some problems uh, but anyways we'll drag out a key now okay so by default it's black but if we change the key type to say red we um, everything should work so if we press play right I overlap right it's not transporting me anywhere but as soon as I pick up the key I go through now I'm in the new level so woohoo right awesome um, now just to kind of show the persistence going on between the game instance uh, we'll go to that test really quick and I'm simply going to um, add a level transition turn this uh, for the name we'll say third person example map so we'll send ourselves back to that map and we'll choose green this time uh, but we're not going to put a key in instead we're going to go back to our third person map really quick add in um, a key and we will make this a green key okay so if you press play and I pick up the green and red I can go through and now since it's persistent right it transported me back so um, as you can see our systems working um, and you know I hope this I hope this helped uh, and if you guys like these videos you know like or subscribe and we will see you in the next one